I'm Shanae Anderson, Curator of Education and Farms at Sedgwick County Zoo, and we welcome you to Sedgwick County Zoo's Career Fair. Now, like many of you, I knew at a young age that I wanted to work with animals in nature, but I just really had no idea what types of careers were out there. So for the next few minutes, we're going to take some time for you to explore the different careers that are out there working with animals in nature. One might speak to you right now, or you might find 10, 15 years from now that that's the career you ended up being in, even though you never thought you would. With 3,000 animals and nearly 400 different species to care for, zookeeping will always play a crucial role in keeping our zoo world flourishing. However, you may be surprised to find that there are other job opportunities beyond working with animals. Today, we're diving into a few of the wild careers you could someday pursue at our very own Sedgwick County Zoo. My name is Emma and I work in the Tropic Birds Department. I have a bachelor's degree in zoo science and biology, but on top of that, I had some internships and externships at different zoos that helped me get the position I'm in today. So a day in the life of a bird keeper is a lot of feeding and a lot of cleaning. Birds have really fast metabolism, so they eat twice, if not three times a day, depending on the species. The smaller the bird, the faster they burn food. But you can never prepare for a full day. We always have different projects we're working on or different bird moves. I wish I would have known the fast pace that the zoo runs at. You get here at eight and you don't stop moving until you leave. It takes a, a little bit to get acclimated to the workload of being a zookeeper, but you're having so much fun and the day passes by so quickly. So the weather is definitely something that you have to be in tune with. We check it multiple times throughout the day because it changes so much. Birds have temperature guidelines. So if it's below 32, certain birds have to come inside. If it's below 50, a separate group of birds come inside. If it's over those temperatures, we're running misters and all these kinds of things. So the physical aspect of it, you definitely need to be prepared for some sore muscles. You're lifting a lot, moving a lot of things. The hours aren't really bad. As a zookeeper, you separate your weekend. So you'll still have two days off, but you won't always have like a Friday, Saturday or a Sunday, Monday. Like it takes a little bit to work up to those. And then you don't always get your holidays off. So being able to sacrifice like working Christmas or Thanksgiving is definitely part of the job. So the tropics department is the tropics building, but it encompasses a lot of other areas as well. So we take care of flamingos, pelicans. We have a couple groups of birds over in the Okapi yards. And then we have a behind the scenes breeding facility called the avian propagation facility. The whole place is specifically meant for breeding. So we have a bunch of individuals that we have recommendations for species survival plans for. We have some birds that are extinct in the wild that we're trying to breed. The whole concept is that we're trying to build their populations up. Some of the most rewarding parts of my job are definitely building relationships with birds. People don't realize that birds have such big personalities sometimes. So we definitely have some iconic birds in the building that they just learn to trust us. So they'll take grapes from us or worms and things like that. Another big part of the job is breeding those really important birds. So if we get a golden white eye chick or raising a chick from egg to where it's flying on its own, those parts of the job are super rewarding to me because it's just is really fulfilling. To be a zookeeper, you definitely have to be able to go with the flow. You also need to be able to work with other people really well. You have to be able to balance different people's personalities and how they get along with each other and then all be able to focus on the same common goals. Being a zookeeper is a passion job. Money is great, but it definitely is a job where you come to work and you love what you do and it's not necessarily for the money. I love doing what I do because I like making a difference. I can see that I make a difference in the birds' lives and I can see that for the future, the conservation work that the zoo does makes a big difference, not only here, but also like in the natural habitats that these animals live in. It just feels like you have a bigger purpose, so being a part of that makes me feel like I'm making a difference. Aaron Bailey, maintenance manager here at the Sedgwick County Zoo. There's not two days that are alike in maintenance. We do a little bit of everything. The variety of things we do here, is the big difference. People that do maintenance work at, uh, say, a manufacturing facility 
or a larger warehouse type facility. They're doing more of the traditional maintenance and the preventative maintenance. Home or apartment maintenance, they do a lot of the smaller type stuff that we do here also. Electrical outlets, light switches, appliances, light bulbs, and some plumbing. And here we mix in a lot of construction, a lot of metal fabrication, a lot of uh, woodworking and framing, forming and concrete. It's, it's a good mix of maintenance and construction. We also provide the manpower for a lot of the animal moves and procedures. So making repairs in those animal areas, we're close to them to begin with. So it, we do get to see a lot of things that other people at the zoo even, let alone maintenance workers, get to experience. We're required to all the basic boilerplate stuff, sit, stand, stoop, bend, walk, climb, frequently lift 50 pounds. You need to be able to do all those things and do them all day long. So we work outdoors and indoors. We work outdoors in all weather. Some of the staff comes in from 7 a.m. to 4. Uh, the rest of the staff comes in from 8 to 5. We are allowed overtime, uh, which is not common, but it is limited. We do have some mandatory overtime uh, with special events. We work in all areas of the zoo, every building, every animal area. We go everywhere. We see everything. We know everybody. <laughs> For educational requirements, it's high school diploma or equivalent. Welding certificates help. What we really like to have here in the maintenance shop is people who are mechanically inclined, who have some background, uh, who have positive attitudes, that can learn through on-the-job training. Uh, that don't have preconceived notions of how things are going to be. Communication is vitally important. Uh, we do work around dangerous animals and dangerous equipment. We have to communicate well uh, and customer service. People tend to get assigned to things that they naturally excel at. It is uh, mentally challenging. You have to have good critical thinking skills. We troubleshoot uh, a lot of issues. We have to be innovative. <laughs> Personally, I enjoy working with my hands. The tangible product at the end of the day, you can see what you've built, what you've accomplished, the fruits of your labors. The public enjoying their experience here because of things that you've built or done. I'd say being able to make an impact, to, to know that you you have made a difference either for guests coming out and enjoying themselves, connecting with nature, or your coworkers making their jobs easier. Also to provide something for the animals in our care. Overall, um, broadly, maintenance contributes to the conservation mission of the zoo in customer experience, guest experience. When people come out to the zoo and they have a good experience, they connect with nature, they might start to form a bond with uh, maybe something they saw here, and that at least plants the seed of, of caring about what's happening. And maintenance plays into that. You know, if, if the place is run down and falling apart, things are broken inside the animal areas and the animals can't go out, it contributes to the guest experience. That, you know, we keep things nice and orderly and working. All of our coworkers here across the zoo are passionate about what they do. They're very caring. They all have good customer service. They're service minded. We get the added benefit of working around all the animals and, and having a unique experience as far as uh, challenging work, changing environments, unique environments to work in. You're actually enjoying what you do and, and the days kind of fly by from that aspect. It's just a good place to work. My name is Jonathan Roll, and I'm the zoological manager of the ectotherm department. That encompasses reptiles, amphibians, uh, invertebrates, and fish. Day-to-day -day care, cleaning, feeding, looking for any signs of, of illness or issues uh, with the animals. Now, when you're working with animals, when, you know, with live animals, things are going to come up. Things are going to happen. There are times where, yes, you'll get overtime. We've been at the airport picking up venomous snakes. <laughs> at uh, 11 o'clock at night, but uh, it's pretty standard, you know, 40 hour, you know, work week. We luck out that <laughs> 90 something percent of our day is inside. Going into the field, I think people think that they're going to be playing with animals all day and that it's just going to be, you know, one fun thing, one, one exciting thing after another, whether it's, you know, working with venomous snakes, working with crocodilian, but it is still a job that has to be done. It's that same routine that you're doing, you're doing, Doing, but you're getting to do it around these amazing animals. And if you can't step back from the routine momentarily and still feel that amazement, then you're not going to last in the field. I think that's probably the most important thing to have. You have animals that very few facilities around the world have ever had. 
I have helped baby Chinese alligators, which are critically endangered animals, come out of the egg. I've hatched little green mambas and actually watched them strike at prey items multiple times before it will actually hit the ground if they're so fast, uh, the very speedy animals. There are things that you see and things that you get to experience that nobody else, or I shouldn't say nobody else, but very few people in this world will get to experience. And that's what I think keeps me, <laughs> me coming back. If you do have that interest in wildlife for those animals, that's the rewarding side of it. Whether it be with snakes or lizards or frogs or salamanders, to have that sort of that, 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 that interest is I think key to being successful in this field. If it's a passing, yeah, I kind of like them, you're not gonna last, you're not gonna do it because it, does, it is just a job end of the day. I'll just come out and say, don't go into zookeeping if you want to be a millionaire. You're not going to get rich in this field. It's just not going to happen. That's not why you go into it. You learn something new uh, every day, working with new species, working with the species you've worked with uh, you know, years and years. We maintain animals in exhibits. Now, how does that work towards conservation? We let people see and experience the animals from around the world that Frankly, it's some of the animals in our collection that, you, that you're really not going to even see at other zoos. Our education department, having people out there, having programs, the graphics department, the graphics that we put around the building, around the exhibits. Having all those parts working together is, I think, how we help conservation. What you know, it inspires people to have a love of wildlife bringing people in and maybe they think they're coming in just because it's fun. Frankly, I want it to be fun for them. I want it to be enjoyable. But if you can sneak those lessons in, a little bit of education in, uh, people that might not even be thinking about it as an educational experience, that's where the payoff is. Beyond that, we're seeing more opportunities for our keepers to go out and actually take part in field conservation. That, I think, is important for our individual staff members then there's that sense of, you know, I am part of this. I am helping to make a difference. Because I think sometimes keepers feel a separation, sometimes, uh, between what they're doing day to day and that conservation. This exhibit that I'm preparing, this animal I'm taking care of, equals, hopefully, someone out there making better choices. We want passion, we want people that really want to work with reptiles and amphibians and birds and fish. The ones that stand out are the ones that can convey in the cover letter and the resume that this is a passion they've had for a while, that there are things there that they've done to build that foundation, to focus themselves, to, you know, that this is something. And that, that's who we're looking for. Um, I'm Cheryl Rice. I'm the Curator of Horticulture at Central County Zoo. I've been here since 2013. For my position, a horticulture degree or plant science related degree is required. For our hourly staff, they do not have to have any particular degree. We just like for them to have some experience in landscaping or greenhouse work. The wide variety of what we do is what I really love about it. Everyday tasks for our staff are plant care is, is a huge one. So they water, fertilize, watch for pests, they do all the trimming mow all the lawns, do all the weed eating, rock work, and fences. We also run all the irrigation, whether that's hand watering or automatic irrigation. We even produce some animal food. The horticulture department works in every area, inside of exhibits, outside of exhibits. Anything that's on our property, we have a responsibility to maintain, take care of. The kind of person that does this job well is probably somebody with a, just a good attitude, somebody who's eager to learn, who loves being outside, who can just really appreciate what they're doing. Anybody can be taught plant names and how to take care of plants, so even the experience and the education isn't as important as the passion and the drive and that positive attitude that can, that can really get you places with us. Somebody who is interested in this position needs to be able to be very flexible. We work in extreme temperatures, both hot and cold. We, in the winter, do snow removal for the zoo, so that in itself is a big job. It's a very physical job, so we have to be sure that we're able to handle heavy work in those extreme conditions. One of the biggest challenges recently is growing grass in the elephant exhibit. All plants need oxygen to their roots, 
and elephants are heavy. So they compact the soil, they compress everything, and that oxygen is way less available. A Johnny or big male kicks it up into little rolls and eats it. So there's a lot of damage done that we have to try to mitigate. And that's kind of the, the biggest challenge is dealing with keeping plants looking their best in animal spaces, as well as in the human space, the public spaces. People are hard on things too. Our typical hours, uh, in the winter we work eight to five, and in the summer we work seven to four. Horticulture touches a lot of different conservation aspects. We choose plant material that is water-wise, meaning that it doesn't require as much water as other plants might. We have a big pollinator garden near the grizzly bear exhibit, and we use pollinators pretty widely over the whole zoo. We also send staff out on field conservation trips. I love my job. There's so much more to it than I thought there was. Probably my favorite part is shaping what our zoo landscape is. We get to see projects from start to finish. We get to see what things look like before and then transform them into something that people, our guests, and the animals can enjoy. I get to be outside, I get to be around animals without having to clean up after them, and I get to be around the plants that I enjoy. Hi, I am Lauren Ripple and I am the elephant manager here at Sedgwick County Zoo. I have an animal science degree and a lot of it in zoos is on the job training, but you're going to have to get a degree as you get older. For my role being in a manager position, I oversee seven keepers and three part-timers and then eight elephants. So it's a lot of managing people and the training and socialization of the elephants. My background is a little bit different. I grew up raising horses, so I'm not unfamiliar with cleaning up after animals and doing medical care and training them, but for younger people who don't realize there is a lot of manual labor, a lot of cleaning up day to day and just recognizing behavior. They're a fascinating social animal. Each day is a little different. I mean, we have our routine, but because of their personalities and because of how intelligent they are, it's just amazing to watch these guys from day to day. The typical hours are at this zoo, eight to five, five days a week kind of like the post office, rain, sleet, snow. We're here working outside, inside for these animals. You do have to be physically fit. It is a demanding job. They eat about 1,300 pounds a day. So you have to be able to lift a lot of bells and pay. You have to know going into a zookeeping career that it's a passion job and it's you're not here for the pay. So you're gonna be making less than ideally you would be coming out of college. To be honest, you have to learn how to deal with all sorts of personalities. The animal part is easy, but learning to listen to your coworkers and hear what they're saying and not just react, but actually know different personalities is essential to this job. I get to work with elephants every single day and not many people get to say that. I'm here for them. We try to participate in as much research with these guys here that are gonna help the other elephants in range countries. We have human elephant conflict, poaching, so the better educated that people are on the issues that they're facing, then they can find conservation efforts and different avenues to try to help elephants out. We brought in six elephants from Swaziland, but that was a huge undertaking, unloading six elephants from crates and then training elephants that have never been in human care before, them having learned how to learn. The best way to start out is get your foot in the door, whether that's volunteering. I mean, that's probably your first bet if you're going to college and then volunteering your hours during college too, because the same people who are hiring you for like an internship or they're the ones that are going to be hiring you, the ones that you're working with day to day. So, and work ethic is a huge part of this job. My name is Gabrielle Annenson and I'm a commissary zookeeper at the Sedgwick County Zoo. So every day we get here at 6 a.m. and we load the truck with all the diets that the zookeepers are going to feed out that day. And then we have to go to each area and make a stop to unload it into their fridges. And then we come back to commissary and we make the diets for the day. At 1 o'clock we answer all of our phone messages. We write them down and make a list. 
and then we'll go out and we'll deliver again. We would deliver bedding, salt blocks, bags of grain, extra produce for training, paper towels. We also provide all of the important tools, personal protective equipment and uniforms, hoses, buckets, like all of those things that the zookeepers need every day to take care of their animals as we get it for them. It's an early morning. I had to become a morning person, which wasn't too bad. You need a lot of energy and get really busy when you have a meat delivery and a fish delivery and a produce delivery all coming in on the same day and you need to get routine done. Staying organized is also really helpful. We write a lot of things down. We have a lot of lists. Our diet books are as organized as we can keep them. Team player also is a big one. Weather's not too much of a concern for us other than deliveries. Ordering food can be very challenging, especially with things that can expire really easily like the produce. You don't want to order eight boxes if you're only going to use two. When we don't have something that people really need, we either have to go out and get it or we'll have to rush order it. It can be really difficult when there's shortages, like we couldn't get jelly today, for example. And then there's an animal that takes his medication in jelly. We do have a stock, so that's really good. I think the rewarding things are also the same as the challenging things. When somebody like really needs something, I really enjoy when I'm able to find that thing for them, like, especially when it's not even them who needs it, it's their animals who need it. I've wanted to be a zookeeper since I don't even know when I was small. My parents tell me that I'm like always playing with like little animals. I'd like get a doll for my birthday and I'd like not play with it. I'd play with little animals instead. I studied a lot of uh, biology and zoo science in high school. As far as college goes, I went to Friends, which is a private university and it's expensive. I think it's well worth it. I loved my college experience. I was in the zoo science club, volunteered at the zoo, practicum at the zoo. I think it really did prepare me for being here. My job, I think, is really important in conservation because if we weren't here, then the zookeepers in the other areas, they'd have to be preparing their own diets. We've already prepped it to an extent. Some prep it more than their, their own kitchens, but have already gathered it all and weighed it out and they just need to present it to the animals in a palatable way. We're feeding the animals, so if they didn't get fed or didn't have the right nutrition, then they wouldn't be in a healthy place to breed and pass on their important gene pool. I think I would tell people that anything that they can do to support the zoo is supporting conservation, like just coming out and buying something from the gift shop or from the restaurant is, is helping our conservation. But also volunteering. I volunteered for a year and I had a blast. It was so much fun. You might not feel like you're doing a lot for conservation when you're doing those things, like volunteering, but really you are because the zookeepers have so much to do. Like here in this area, we have a little bit of downtime where we're able to work on projects and stuff that need to be done. But a lot of other areas don't have a lot of time. Like they're just doing routine or they're training. They have just a lot to do. So when they have a volunteer to help them with the cleaning, they're able to do a lot more with the training or they're able to put in more detailed reports or do research that way whoever the researcher is or the vets or whoever can be more informed and better informed so that we can better keep the species. I'm Karen King and I'm the elementary education specialist in the Ambassador Animal Care Coordinator. You can come to my position in a variety of different ways. You can have an education background, you can have a wildlife background, a science background is necessary. I actually trained to be a park ranger and came to the zoo by luck. And I got an, an education position and I feel really lucky that I got that position. I have a beautiful set of hours. I work eight to five Monday through Friday. In a day in, of the life of Kara, it is never the same. There's always kids to interact with and, and guests to talk to, and there's always animal needs that need to be met. I have a very busy and varied schedule, but I get the best of both worlds. I get to work with animals and I get to work with kids. I try to get up and utilize as much of the zoo as I can, but I also get a lot of time in the animal rooms. And this is sort of a new venture for me, but training animals to do species specific behaviors, things that they would make normally do, that's really been rewarding because they then they're participating in their care. You really do need to be physically fit with guests and students you're up and down doing activities and being active with them, but also animal care, you're kneeling and bending and stretching and using your muscles, carrying heavy grain bags. So physical fitness is really important. Mental fitness too, because curveballs are gonna get thrown at you. You might have an unhappy guest or a sick animal, and so you have to be able to be resilient with that too. First year teachers can expect to make a little more than, than we walk in making. So um, it is a job of passion, but 
I wouldn't do anything else. The reason I do what I do is because when we were little, we spent a lot of time in the Flint Hills and there's a favorite spot and we've been in the car. There's three siblings sitting in the back seat. My parents are in the front and we've been bickering and we get to the spot and my dad takes us out and he's like, shh, be quiet. And I'm like, well, I'm really not done fighting with my sister yet. And so he, he made us be quiet and he said, what do you hear? And my response was nothing. And he said, you need to listen closer. And so I listened closer and I could hear birds. I could hear the wind. I could hear grasshoppers. And I knew in that moment that I loved what I was seeing and all of these creatures. And I wanted to be part of that somehow. And if I could teach people that love of nature, then that's all I wanted to do. And so I just moved forward with my dream from there. There's a lot of rewards when you see a guest or a program participant make that connection between themselves and animals or nature and they get it. They understand their actions are important and you know that they're going to go out and change their behavior for the better of the world, really. Or they're going to become the next conservationist because they care about this animal in a new way. I feel like, oh, I feel like my job is so important in conservation because I I get to do environmental education with kids and I think that is the tool that they need to become passionate about nature is through exploration and I get to do that every day so I get to help shape the next generation of conservationists. I help I get to help make them excited and, and hopefully get them out there loving nature as much as, as those that I work with do. Go outside and get dirty. Don't be afraid of nature and find how you work with nature. Once you really start figuring out that you're part of that cycle and that it, you can enjoy it and it's a free resource for us to use, you're gonna start taking care of it and it's really gonna make an impact. That's so much more important than me saying recycle your aluminum can, recycle your aluminum can, but go outside and play. My name is Brittany Allison and I'm a registered vet tech at Center County Zoo. My name is Jenny Croft. I'm also a registered vet tech. I'm Stephanie Youngkin. I'm a registered vet tech at Cedric County Zoo. I went to school for two years and obtained uh, associates in applied science for veterinary technology. And then we take our national boards and pass those and then you become a registered veterinary technician. I feel like the biggest challenge is that everything is different. When you go to school for this job, you learn about cats and dogs and horses and cows, the domestic animals. But when you come to a place like the zoo, it still applies. You just have to tweak it a little bit. And sometimes that's hard to do. You don't get training to draw blood on a gorilla. Your vet tech education initially is a great foundation to work from. And then when you come into this field as a zoo vet tech, you've got to be open to learning new methods. You learn every day because each day you know, you might work on an animal that you haven't worked on mm -hmm. before. That makes doing internships or externships or whatever you want to call them at zoos or different exotic animal places so important. Really, until you do it in your job, you probably have never done it before. When I first started, I came from a small animal practice where your days are very structured. You start with your appointments and you have appointments every 30 minutes. Some days you have surgeries. When I came here, it's a lot more, you just have to go day to day. You have moments where you are deep into what you're doing on the computer or whatever, and then all of a sudden an emergency comes in, you've got to drop everything and jump in there and be just ready to go. We do eight to five here. Uh, we all have varying schedules so that two of us are here most of the time, and then on weekends there's one of us, and then some days we have all three of us here. We've come in on our days off before. Animals don't just get sick from eight to five. Usually the veterinarians are on call. They come in and then if they need help, they can call us in as second pair of hands. Some days we're on our feet for eight hours. We have to move lions and tigers. We have to be gentle enough to work on little amphibians. And then the weather, if the animal need help. I mean, if we have a bison that needs work and it's raining, you're going to be working outside. So you just have to be prepared for everything. We also do a lot of lab work on a regular basis. We do a lot of shipping of samples to other research facilities. Cleaning is a huge encompassing part of our job because you can't have 
a, your hospital when your whole goal is to keep things clean and safe. All of the animals here get their exams. We work with the amphibians, the reptiles, the birds, the mammals. We work with everything. So I think as vet techs, our biggest role in conservation is just to be able to help and keep healthy those animals that are endangered. We do have a pretty large bird collection here. And what's extremely challenging is when you're holding a bird in your hand and you realize there are 200 of them total in the whole world. The species has been on the brink of extinction and you are literally holding a little life in your hand that is one of 200 or yes. one of 100. There are some things that we have are even rarer. And to come to work knowing that this is your responsibility every single day. It's always an uphill battle. And sometimes you do lose an animal and I think that is one of the most heartbreaking moments and every single one of them hits you. No matter what it is, every single death affects you. You definitely need to be passionate about what you do because there are going to be tough days or great days and you just want to be able to have that level of like, you know why you're here and you love that you're here. Someone who is strong-willed but also adaptable. You can't just be like, oh no, we've always done it. Um, we've always used this. You have to be willing to try everything. A lot of the equipment that we use is made for dogs and cats and you know, domestic animals. So another challenge is finding ways to convert that equipment to be used for a gorilla versus a little bird. Face mask is a good example. We have a gallon milk jug that we have cut in the right shape that fits just right over, you know, like a gorilla or chip nose. These teeny tiny little syringe case face masks that we've made for teeny tiny little birds. So it's just such a wide variety and we have to make sure that our equipment can work for all of those guys. The types of animals that you actually get to put your hands on is just extraordinary. We had a white sort who broke his beak and after trying to amputate a part of it, he wouldn't try to eat. And we had the, a veterinary dentist come in and give him prosthetics, but it still took him a while to learn to eat. He needed live fish so he could feel the food in his mouth before he ate it. He was in here for two, three months and we had to tube feed him to keep him healthy until he learned to eat himself. And he's still alive and around. So you get these cases where when they leave the hospital, you do breathe a sigh of relief, but you're also inside so happy that you know you contributed to this animal's well-being and it would not be here without your input and the doctor's input. So, hey, um, in the zoo field, it's sadly going to be less than what you would make in a small animal practice or in an emergency practice or probably research too, but that's how you know that someone loves what they do. It's a real confidence booster to be able to say, I placed that catheter in that chimpanzee or in that gorilla or in that tiger or, you know, I drew blood from that orangutan while he was voluntarily presenting his arm for it. It's very rewarding. I love it. Just the whole conservation aspect of it. Um, being able to take care of these endangered animals and give them the best life possible. It, like Jenny said, it gives you that confidence boost. Knowing that you did this today and maybe this day wasn't so good, but tomorrow you'll pull, it, pull through and be able to do it again. It keeps you going. My name is Colleen Rapp and I'm the zoological manager of the children's farms at the Sedgwick County Zoo. I have a bachelor's in animal agriculture and I feel like a degree like that or something in biology, wildlife management, or something along those lines is, is pretty helpful. You know, the joke is that no day is typical. A lot of it is cleaning up after animals, and that's just unavoidable. Feeding, making diets, watching the animals, their behavior, um, if they're feeling well or, or anything like that are all, you know, key things that we do every day. But there can also be a lot of variety. We work outside a lot. It doesn't matter if it's freezing, freezing rain, snow, 110 degrees, you know, we still have to be out in it. To work with hoof stock, they poop a lot and it gets heavy. So a certain level of physical fitness, you know, does help. You do build some muscles. Doing things to try to 
make the animals' lives more rich and, and everything is also something that we try to do. I, I grew up in a, a small town and knew people that were farmers, so it was never a surprise to me how much work is actually involved in taking care of animals. I think for some people that may not have that background, that could be kind of a shock. But when they're either you know in a farm setting or in a zoo exhibit or habitat or anything like that, they're completely dependent on us for everything. You know, cleaning things up, making their environment safe, food, all the necessities. So I think that's one thing that people may not you know quite understand is that it does take a, a level of dedication. It is a lot of fun, it's a lot of work, but it is enjoyable. For my specific area, because I do work with domestics, which are not commonly thought of as typical zoo animals, that's always kind of been something that I've tried to educate people on, is that some breeds of domestic animal can be more endangered than a lot of the exotic species. So we work with a lot of these breeds, trying to conserve them, because they are genetically unique, and we don't want to lose that diversity. They're literally millions of cows in the United States, but what is rare are just those specific breeds, like the white park that we have in the farms. There's probably maybe a thousand to twelve hundred of them in the United States. Depending on the breed, some of them can be really, really critically rare. The rewards of this job are in the intangible category, being outside, being with animals, being able to do something that you're passionate about. I can look at some of the work I've done over the years and see how that's had a, an actual direct impact on conservation of these breeds. It's not something that's ever gonna make you financially rich, but there are definitely a lot of other, other payoffs to doing the work. I really feel like I kind of found a niche where I've been able to make a difference, and so I think that's why I keep coming back. <laughs> I think you have to be relatively meticulous, good attention to detail, being able to know your animals, observe them, and know when something is even slightly off can be the difference in that animal living or dying in some instances. If you catch an illness or something quickly, you can get them treated and you know help them live a better life. Somebody that can be dedicated and is willing to kind of put their comfort aside to make sure that their animals are taken care of. Most of the time getting a, a zookeeping job is pretty competitive and a lot of that is because you know for everyone that is here there are 10 more that want to do it. By supporting zoos and buying a membership or visiting really does help us be able to give to those conservation programs. So just knowing that they are making a difference with their attendance, I would love for everybody to know. And I know the gift shop, I think they still do the rounding up for conservation. So that's all just basically, you know, extra funds that can go to programs and things like that. So it really does help. If you know you want to work at a zoo or a nature center or be a vet, volunteer. Even if you start volunteering or working in an area that you don't think is the area you want to be in, you're going to gain valuable experience. Don't be afraid to take that first job. What's probably going to happen is as you're out there doing your best, someone's going to walk by and notice. They're going to notice the care that you give each and every day to your job. And that same person might be the person that's interviewing you four or five years later for your first position that's full time. We focus a lot on STEAM, which is science, technology, engineering, art, and yes, even math. So make sure that as you're going through your studies, you feel comfortable in those areas. So that will allow you to be better prepared for that forever career. Get out, get involved, and then figure out what you can do to get that foot in the door so that you can have that dream job. With a mission of inspiring respect and conservation for wild animals and wild places, the Sedgwick County Zoo is dedicated to serving its amazing animals and guests year round. Our vision to be a global leader in conserving wildlife and wild places, both at home and around the world, is only made possible with our team of passionate and hardworking staff members, volunteers, docents, and even stakeholders. If you have a love for conservation, a desire to make a difference, and think that you might be called to a career in the zoo field, begin your own walk on the wild side by visiting scz.org employment to learn more. The Sedgwick County Zoo is a part of the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, AZA represents more than 200 institutions which meet the highest standards in animal care and dedicate millions of dollars to scientific research, conservation, and education programs. 
To browse all current job listings for AZA zoos across the country and overseas, please visit aza.org jobs.